Hello and welcome to the Author's Anvil and to Foundations of Writing, a series dedicated to the art and craft of writing and communication. For our first episode, we'll be taking a look at what I think are the four main principles of good writing, or the four C's as I like to call them. This lecture is aimed at anyone who wants to improve their writing, whether you're a student crafting an academic thesis, a business wanting to sell your brand, or a budding author. I firmly believe that the content that I'll be putting forward can be applied to any form of writing, and that these four C's should be in the forefront of your mind when you're composing a piece of work. So what are the four C's? Well, I believe that your writing should be the following. Clear, concise, consistent, and correct. On the surface, these concepts may seem rather obvious, but there is actually much more to unpack here than you might realise, so let's dig a little deeper, shall we? Starting with being clear. On the most base level, being clear in your writing is about making it as digestible to your target audience as possible. This is as simple as making the words on an advertising poster be large enough to read, or having the camera for your film be in focus, or speaking coherently when delivering a speech. Clarity extends to having good grammar, a clear purpose, and making sure that your work is well formatted so that it is as easy as possible for people to take it in. Thinking about how clear your work is ties into your target audience. If you're writing a children's story, for example, you probably want to avoid using long, complicated words, or if you're a biologist delivering a lecture to a non-scientific audience, you will need to think about which technical terms need to be explained for them to understand what you're trying to say. But John, you might say, what about stories that are supposed to be confusing or ambiguous? What if I want to create a disorientating atmosphere for my audience for dramatic effect? Surely in those cases I don't want to be clear. Well, you cheeky devil, I would respond, I'd say that your intention of making something unclear should still be made clear to the audience. We as the reader or cinema goer should still understand that the world or scenario that we're experiencing is one of confusion or ambiguity. A really good example of this is the psychological horror film Perfect Blue, which tells the story of a young actress who slowly loses her mind when an obsessive fan starts trying to murder her. Throughout the film there are very abstract sequences and cuts that make it very hard for us to follow along with what's going on in the actress's life, which helps immerse us into the descent to insanity along with the character. While we may not understand what is happening on a day-to-day -day business with the main character, we do understand that she's losing her grip on reality, and that is the point of those scenes. Thus, even when you're trying to be confusing and ambiguous, you should still make it obvious that this is your intention as a writer. That's all I have to say about clarity for the time being. This point, I hope, has been pretty self-explanatory. The next thing that I want to talk about is the idea of making writing as concise as possible. Being concise is all about trimming down your work as much as you can while still delivering all the information that you need to your audience. I find that the most catchy advertising jingles and slogans are the ones that are short and therefore easy to remember. Just do it. Think different. Taste the rainbow. Can you imagine if instead of these companies had made their slogans, just perform this action, or formulate your thoughts differently, or even taste the meteorological phenomenon that is caused by reflection, refraction, and dispersion of light and water droplets resulting in a spectrum of light appearing in the sky. Thanks, Wikipedia. There's a reason why ads are short, and it's not just because of budget. I really hope academics and educators are listening to this, because my goodness the topic of being concise is something that needs addressing. Too often in universities, students are made to suffer through pages upon pages of information that could have been edited down to half its length. If you really want to persuade someone of something, or make them understand a topic, do not avalanche them with every single fact and facet of knowledge that you possess, or at least don't make it compulsory reading. Especially do not lengthen your work with unnecessary pretentious language to hide your fragile ego. Again, this does not make your writing good, just tiresome. Okay, that's enough ranting about writing in higher education. You're probably wondering how this point applies to storytelling. A few of you may be pointing fingers at me. But John, you love long movies like Lord of the Rings and TV shows like Star Trek. Those aren't very concise, are they? Well, you spicy devil, I'd say. I do believe I said earlier that being concise is all about trimming down your work as much as you can while still delivering all the information that you need to your audience. For many stories, especially in the fantasy and sci-fi genre, extra time needs to be taken to immerse the reader in an imaginary world, and help them understand the rules of that world, more on this later. Furthermore, character development, like in hashtag real life, takes time and happens gradually, and so again this requires more running time to make their transformation more believable to the audience. Every scene, every chapter, or every episode of your work should have a point that serves the narrative. To put it simply, I need to see Frodo overcome obstacles so that he learns what it takes to be a hero, but I don't need to see him eating every single meal on his way to Mordor. I suppose my point is, is that being able to write concisely is all about achieving that balance between being efficient, 
but still delivering the information and purpose of your work as fully as you can. I'm not saying that this is easy, by the way. In fact, it is very difficult. However, it is definitely something that you should be at least trying to achieve when composing your work. Moving on to my third C of writing, we're going to look at the importance of being consistent. Starting with the most basic part of this idea, I firmly believe that having the same language, style, and formatting throughout a work is much more pleasant to read than having to deal with multiple styles at once. Let's say that you're a British brewery advertising your new craft ale, and you release a poster written in British English, since British people are your target audience. Now, it would be very odd to suddenly switch to Italian, or worse still, American English, halfway through the poster. People would be very confused. In perhaps a less extreme vein, it's important to remain consistent in your language as this can really set the tone of voice for the work. If you're writing a children's storybook, you probably don't want to start inserting crass slang after the third chapter. Keeping a consistent style also helps people to remember your work. Businesses often make unique language choices so that people start to associate them with a particular font or grammatical choice. Have you ever seen anyone write iPhone with a capital I? So, on to storytelling then. What needs to be consistent here? Well, firstly, your fictional world needs to maintain its set rules and physics. What do I mean by this? Well, if your story is set in 3rd century London, you probably wouldn't describe or show the gherkin building sat in the middle of the city, because in our world it wouldn't have been built yet. Similarly, you wouldn't have your human characters be able to grow extra arms at will, since, at the moment, human beings are not capable of such feats. But what about in sci-fi and fantasy where there's magic and technology that break our understood rules and physics? Well, your job as a writer is to establish your own world's rules and physics, and to make this clear to the reader so they know what is and isn't possible. It's established in Game of Thrones that Westeros is a medieval society, with pre-industrial technology, which is why Jon Snow can only fight the White Walkers with a sword rather than a bazooka. In the Star Wars universe, it is established that being able to properly use the Force takes a lot of time and effort to learn, as it is a skill as well as an inherent gift. So when we meet a character who learns Force powers with no training or mentor, it is very jarring for the audience. These two examples are what I'd call internal consistency, and it is important for several reasons. Internal consistency establishes stakes and tensions, as we understand when characters aren't and are in danger. Internal consistency helps us to follow along with plot and can help foreshadow things to come. Internal consistency makes a fictional world feel alive and real, makes us curious about the rules and physics that we are yet to learn about. I could go on and on about this topic, but frankly I think this warrants its own video, so for the time being, all I'll say is that consistency is certainly something that should be in the back of your mind when writing. So at last, we arrive at our final C, that writing should be correct. Hopefully this is something that I don't need to go into too much detail about. When you write something educational, non-fictional, or for marketing purposes, the information that you want to give your audience should be as correct as possible. Don't advertise that your new craft ale is £4 a bottle at your local supermarket when actually it's £5. Don't tell people that 2 plus 2 equals 5 when actually it's 4. But John, you might say, how do you know that there are such things as objective facts? My response to this would be that for the purposes of this video, we are just dealing with the accepted truths of our reality, and that philosophical arguments about metaphysics and knowledge is a completely different ballpark to what needs to be discussed for the purposes of this video. If you have doubts about the nature of reality and knowledge, then you have much bigger problems than how to correctly spell words like rambunctious. Anyway, being as correct as possible in your writing should involve research, peer review, and multiple drafts. When you present facts and figures, these should be properly sourced, so that your audience can perform their own investigation after they've consumed your work. But what about when you present opinions or information that isn't confirmed yet? Or perhaps you're investigating an educational article that isn't well sourced? Well, this is where we go a little deeper into the idea of being correct, to a place of honesty. If your article, marketing campaign, or academic paper involves opinions or shaky evidence, you have a responsibility to make that clear to your audience. Especially in the digital world we live in, we could really do with people being more honest. I know a few of you are probably curious as to how being correct applies to storytelling. Well, at the very least we can go back to our previous point about internal consistency, and how that is a form of correctness within your fictional world. Imagine if in To Kill a Mockingbird, which is supposed to be set in 1930s Alabama, Harper Lee told us that Atticus Finch was a white lawyer, but then in the chapter afterwards he's described as having black skin and calloused hands from a life working as a stable hand. We as the reader would be very confused, because the consistency of the story has been broken. We might think that something magical has happened to drastically rewrite the history of the novel, and we would be expecting an explanation from Lee about what's going on. If no explanation was given, then we'd start to question what else is true or not in the novel, and would therefore be distracted away from the actual plot and themes of the book. 
I very quickly also want to talk about honesty from a character perspective. When describing things from someone else's perspective, you really need to think about how that person would think. What sort of language would they use? What sort of details would they notice about someone or something? A reptile enthusiast might describe a snake as slender, smooth, and beautiful, while a child who's afraid of snakes would probably describe the same creature as creepy or scaly. You've got to be honest with how a character would think, be motivated, and perceive the world. Again, this honesty links back to consistency, and can also really help us to learn about the character. Being correct, then, in your writing is not just about presenting facts to the best of your ability, but it's also about being honest to your audience as well. So to wrap this all up, I challenge you, dear listener, next time you're developing your film script, making a blog post, or even just sending a message to a friend, ask yourself these four questions. Is the writing clear and easy to understand? As concise as it can be without failing to put across its purpose? Grammatically, stylistically, and thematically consistent? And correct in the information it puts across, or at least honest about the information it puts across? I make it all sound very simple, but these four things actually take a lot of practice and dedication to do well. Writing, after all, is a skill. I myself still have a long way to go before I can say that I've mastered any one of these things, but at least if you're aware of them, you'll be on the right track and will have a better chance of producing engaging and meaningful writing. Thanks for listening, everyone. This is the first video podcast lecture that I've ever done, and thus I'm very eager to hear any feedback anyone has. Leave a comment down below. This was a lot of fun to do. I might make more videos in the future, so if you're interested in hearing more about writing, you should totally subscribe. Until then, I hope you learned something, hope you're having a wonderful day, and happy writing!